All right, welcome back to Pursuit Fishing. Today I'm doing a video on my most productive baits of 2019. Right, uh, my go-to confidence baits that were almost always tied on crap pretty much year-round. I mean, the whole year. Um, yeah, I actually even fished some of these. Um, I have, I'm remembering a video I did on December 31st, 2018. I know it's a 2019 video, but I was throwing one of these baits on December 31st in 49 degree water and it was the only thing I got bit on. We'll come back to that. So these, these are like the, the meat and potatoes of, of my fishing. I love to fish these and I have confidence in these. For people in my area, right, I'm in Oregon. So for people in my area, this may help you. Uh, I think most bass anglers would agree that Oregon bass fishing is a little bit different. Um, you know, the colors, like a lot of the bodies of water I fish I don't see shad in them, right? It's bluegill and perch seem to be the bait fish. So let's let's get into these baits. Uh, I'm gonna start with one of my favorite baits, the classic, the spinners. These were the baits I was throwing December 31st, 2018. 49 degree water, and I I I fished everything else right i tried some crankbaits that day uh i tried the ned rig i tried some senkos and i couldn't get bit i got bored and i started just slow rolling this exact spinner around white chartreuse a little bit of blue gold blades willow blades and just rolling it around um i got a fish that day and i think i missed two others um so you know <laughs> A spinner in 49 degree water, I'll take it. But I threw, these are my main two colors, right? This one, I really liked uh, at some of the coastal lakes where there was a lot of perch. Uh, I threw this one, you know, a, a fair amount. It's got this nice kind of striped brown on the top. And then bold colors. And... The thing, I, spinners are classic, we all know this, but what I love about them is I don't have to straight retrieve, right? I really like to be going along three, four, five cranks, pause it for a split second, get these blades to flutter. The amount of times that got a strike, real good. Um, where they really shined, obviously, was pre-spawn. I caught a lot of spots on this color. Um... But, but all year, I pretty much always had one tied on. And I have my own little personal challenge with spinner baits. Um, sometimes, like, I almost feel like I'm seeing if I can get them hung up. Because <laughs> we know they're hard to hang up. And these nickels, these are nickels half ounce, both of them. It's a pretty short wire, right, from where you tie. So when you come over stuff, it's, it's harder for it to roll over. And that's how it will hang up. Some of them that are longer, it's easier to roll it over and hang it up, if that makes sense. So, spinners, yep. If you're not throwing them, if you're stuck on that chatterbait, which, I don't get me wrong, I fished the chatterbait. But if you're stuck on the chatterbait, try a spinner. Next. I'll admit, I didn't do a lot of swim jig fishing until this year. I would throw, you know, Kitex, right? Just the Kitex on a jig head or on a, a Texas rig. I started messing around with swim jigs and I love jigs. I just didn't fish a lot of swim jigs. We're going to get into the jigs in a second, the rest of them. But I started throwing swim jigs this year. Holy crap. Fell in love and literally from the first day I fished one, there was always a swim jig tied on. Literally every time I was on the water. And this was a color that 
I really, really liked and had a lot of success with. This is a Sixth Sense. I think this is Pond Scum. But again, it's got that kind of striped uh, brown, which I think helps with the bodies of water where there's perch. And there's perch in pretty much all the bodies of water I fish. And we have small perch, right? Like four inch perch. So that with uh, a Kitek on the back was kind of my go-to there. I threw the Rage Swimmer. Um, I didn't like it as much. It, uh, it didn't have the same action, it's stiffer. Um, I messed around with the Sixth Sense uh, swim bait. Is it just the Divine swim bait? Uh, whatever, you, you guys know it. Um, I caught fish, but I, I didn't, it just didn't feel the same as the Kitek. The Kitek's so soft, it kicks so hard. And, you know, my, my beef with that is you go through a lot of them. Put that screw lock on the Sixth Sense swim jig, I don't go through near as many Kitek, so I, I threw them a lot more. I want to mess around with their swim bait a little more and see if I like it, but it did seem uh, the plastic was a little firmer, and so I'm, I'm just wondering how much that reduces the thump back there. Um, but yeah, if you're not throwing the swim jig and you're in Oregon, you're missing out. Ponds, lakes, uh, I didn't throw it in the river as much for the smallmouth because there's shad in the Umpqua where I go smallmouth fishing, not so much bluegill. Um, and I just don't have it in shad colors. I like other baits for that. But for the lakes and the ponds, if you're not throwing one of these, you you are missing out. I got hit on the fall. I got hit with it just sitting on the bottom. Got hit with it on the move coming through the hydrilla and the grass. Cannot say enough good things. All right. Now... This is, this is the way I like to fish. I like jigs. I like jigs. Like, <laughs> love them. Um, I don't care if I only get two bites. Funny, if you go watch my PB, PB video, the seven and a half pound largemouth and the four pound spot, technically I think that spot was 398, but we're calling it four. Um, I fished all day at Cottage Grove for those two fish. Those were my only two bites and my only two fish. It was pre-spawn. And I was going for a big fish, right? I didn't care. I was going to be out there all day. I got two bites and I PB'd in two species that day. We'll get into what jig that was. But where to start on the jig? So my staple, if I'm just kind of not sure where I want to start, half ounce pitching jig. Uh, in some sort of natural color, a brown, a green pumpkin. I think this is green pumpkin brown. Um, I'll throw like watermelon sometimes. Uh, but a half ounce, half ounce pitching jig. And the trailer I normally start with is either a D-bomb or a Reactions, Reaction Innovations uh, Sweet Beaver, right? Uh, not a ton of action on either of those. You just have the little appendages back there. And that, that kind of gives me my foundation for what the fish want that day. You know, if I'm, if I'm not getting bit at all, right? If I'm starting with this and I am not getting bit at all, I will downsize to a finesse jig. Um, I really like the Dirty Jigs finesse jig. And then I will put a Smalley Beaver on it. And the thing is, right, the finesse jig I basically can do everything with this that I can do with the pitching jig. It falls slower because it's lighter. It's shorter, it's more compact. And, you know, if, if I'm not getting bit on a full-size jig, I generally will start getting bit on the finesse jig. Now, there's also the reverse. If I'm just trying to find the fish, right? I, I really like fishing docks, really like fishing structure. I like fishing shallow. Um, the offshore stuff, drop shotting and cranking deep, it's not my thing. I'll do it, um, but I don't prefer it. So flipping this around, right? I said I start with the half ounce pitching jig. Sometimes if I'm just trying to figure out, right, are the fish on docks, where are they? I'll start with the finesse jig. Now the cool thing about this is big fish will eat it. My PBs, the spot and the seven and a half pound largemouth was on this jig. Not this specific jig, but this exact color, this exact model, I actually lost that jig. 
that they bit, but this is um, this is the 3 8 black and blue. Water was dirty that day. I threw black and blue with a D-bomb trim short, and I trimmed the skirt a little bit. Nice compact profile, four pound spot, seven and a half pound large mouth on this jig. So big fish will eat it, but if I'm just trying to find it, the little fish will eat it, right? If I just want to get fish in the boat, but I don't want to miss a big one because I'm throwing a Ned rig and I get it down there and he doesn't give a crap about that small bait, they might still eat this. Now, flip it around. If I'm going, you know, down the bank, down a line of docks, and I'm getting a bunch of dinks and I'm getting, you know, hit and getting pinchers pulled off, that's an indicator to me it's small fish, generally. Um, I don't think with a jig, right, something moving that slow, if a big fish wants it, I don't think they're going to short strike it, generally, right? It's not like a moving bait where they come up and at the last minute they go, oh, something's not right, and they short strike it. With a jig, to me, they bite it or they don't. Just my opinion. So um, if I'm getting short strikes, I'm getting small fish hitting it on a finesse jig. Or if I'm just catching small fish, cool, now I've found them. Take off the finesse jig. Go back up to a full-size jig with, you know, again, with the uh, the beaver bait, the D-bomb. Um, if you want action, you know, what, a crack and craw. Well, that's Guggen baits. I do like their crack and craw and their bandito bug, unfortunately. I do. I got nothing against them. I'm not a big fan. I got nothing against them, but I, I do like those two baits. But um, strike cream, rage craw, right? Something like that if you want the action. The other bait I had a lot, the other jig I had a lot of success with was a short shanked hook on a half ounce pitching jig. If you can see, let's look at the hook difference here. All right, I got those heads in about the same spot. Longer hook, thicker hook. When I use the short shank one, I keep a handful of these around, maybe three or four. I don't stock my, my Plano jig box full of them, but there's a time where I want more weight than the finesse jig, right? Which is three eighths or five sixteenths. There's like two sizes there. But if I want more weight and I don't want the full size, right? If I'm throwing that full size and I'm not getting bit, but I want the weight, this is a great option. I caught a lot of good fish on this. Throw a smolly beaver on it, um, or just trim, you know, trim the plastic short, keep it nice and compact, but you still have the heft of that half ounce. So that's a little little back pocket trick. Um, and then lastly is the flipping jig. I know football jigs, I just don't fish them a whole lot. Again, I, I like the shallow structure docks. That's what I love to do. Drag in a jig slowly, you know, down points. Meh, not that fun. I'm not trying to win a tournament. I'm out there to have fun, release the BS stress of life and work, right? So, pitching jig. Half ounce, five eighths, um, meaty, meaty hook, right? And when I go to this is if I'm out fishing the hydrilla and I'm not punching with a punching rig, right? Um, I really like these for that. Um, wood, if I'm getting thick, getting into thick wood and laydowns and crap, these are great. Most of you probably know the difference between a flipping and a pitching, but uh, it's that shape. Right? This pitching jig does kind of everything, jack of all trades. This has got a pointier head. It comes through grass and weeds um, and the wood better. This thing wedges up and rocks really bad, though. <clears throat> really bad. Um, so avoid it in the rocks. It'll do it, but it's not ideal. Um, and this color, this is uh, Hematoma from Dirty Jigs. Sweet Beaver, right? And uh, Green Pumpkin. This dark color, man, was so good. Um, I have a video up just called Huge Fall Bass, and I was throwing this exact setup in rocks because I wanted this dark color that's not bold, and I just didn't have it in 
any of my pitching jigs. So I did it, I lost a couple, but I got a fish. Um, so that's, that's kind of my breakdown of my jig fishing, right? Finesse jig, find the fish, get bites when they won't bite anything else. If you're getting short striked or a ton of small fish, upsize. Go to that half ounce pitching jig. And you know, where I fish the most is Cottage Grove and Mercer for lakes. I love those two bodies of water. Um, fish 10 mile a fair amount. 10 miles really fun to fish if you haven't fished it. Um, but it just gets fished hard. So, you know, and it's further for me. It's like an extra hour one way um, to go to 10 miles. So Mercer's fairly close to me. Uh, Cottage Grove is very close. And that's where, that's where I use these. So if you're local, right, if you're around the, the Willamette Valley area, pre-spawn is coming up. Cottage Grove is going to have water rising probably late January, early February. If you're on the bank, get out there. Throw a swim jig, throw a spinner bait, even grab a jig. My four pound spot was caught four feet off the bank, literally four feet off the bank. That's the time of year. It's coming fast. So I wanted to share all these. Look, and, and, and it's not that I don't fish other baits, right? I, I I fish the Tokyo rig. Um, I'm trying to learn to love that, but I don't quite yet. I feel like it should be in this pile, but for me, it's just not. Um, obviously, fish Texas rigs. Um, I just, if I'm messing with putting plastics on hooks, I want a jig. I just feel more confident with a jig than any Texas rig, whether I'm punching, dragging, whatever. Um, you know, I did cranking, did some jerk baits. Um, I just don't. I don't have great success with jerk baits, um, crank baits. You know, admittedly, I'm not good at it, so I try here and there. But I'd rather fish this stuff right here until I've covered the water and not got bit, right, and then go try something else. Um, and I caught big fish this year: seven and a half, six and a half, four pound spot, multiple fish. You know, multiple fish between four and five pounds this year shit way more than multiple like probably almost i don't even know um but lots of them and most of those came on these baits so um i, I share this for more for like i said for the local guys i'm really really interested if anybody's willing to share the baits they love the colors they love have a conversation put it in the comments i know fishermen don't like to give away their secrets but uh you know i I like the conversation. So I'm going to put my favorites out there. I hope you'll put your favorites out there. And yeah, let's, let's, let's compare. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming along. Have a great day. This winter is almost over. Pre-spawn is coming quick and I'm stoked for it. All right. Catch you later.